Hello everyone, so uh, this is going to be Kinsey's how-to. I have uh, Kinsey's trying's and so now I'm going to do a little bit of how-to. Um, right now I am going to be changing my mother's oil on her car. Um, it's an 06 Nissan, but changing oil is kind of very close to the same type of uh, thing for each car. Of course, if you have anything really new, I would suggest looking at the owner's manual and even looking up YouTube videos for your specific car, but for most cars, it's very close to the same thing. So what you'll be needing is, of course, oil filter for your car, exact car, like for ours is an 06 Nissan. So for Fram Extra Guard, we do the P86607. That is the kind of uh, oil filter we get for our car, for my mother's car. And then you need something to catch the oil when it's draining. Um, I have a couple things here. I got an old waste basket that is now being used for car parts, um, for car drippings pretty much, or a cut up uh, five gallon, um, uh, not five gallon, I think it's a three gallon or something, uh, tub. We have them all around here. And then of course your socket, sockets and wrench, socket wrench. Ratchet, wrench, oh my gosh, I can't even speak. Um, right now, I am using the one inch, I mean, half inch, um, but that's mostly just because um, my husband has all my tools. <laughs> In the back of his pickup is all my tools, all the sockets, which I need, but oh well. So, um, a little background. Usually, yes, I am married. Yes, usually the men do all the car stuff. Well, before I was married, I did it, and since my husband's a truck driver, I still do it because sometimes it needs to be done and he just doesn't have the time, and it's not his fault. So I have fun uh, changing the oil on my cars, and this one is mine, but it's the one I let my mom drive all the time. So time to change it, and next we'll be putting it on the ramps. A little hard with this one because it's so low, but we can always get it up there. So. We will be getting back in oh, So bit. we are back. We uh, just got the Nissan up on the ramps. Um, usually it takes a little couple times of practice if this is your first time actually getting it up on the ramps. Always remember to put the e-brake on. Um, as you can see here, I'm a little bit to the um, side, but not enough to make it too dangerous. But always put the e-brake on and park as long as you're... If you're working on the brakes, definitely do not put the e-brake on because then it will lock it up and be very hard to release the calipers. Another show, definitely. Um, but when you are having it on ramps, make sure that the e-brake's on for safety purposes. Um, always, if you really want to, if you're not on a uh, cement surface, put something down to kind of cushion yourself and keep yourself less dirty here we have just gravel and dust as you can tell so it's a little dusty and dirty um also if you are a woman and you have long hair try to put it up and then put something on your head um it just makes it easier to try not to have to wash all the dust out um again wear closed toed shoes and i always suggest wearing some uh jeans that you're not caring about getting dirty um, or if you are going to be doing this regularly uh, buy some coveralls you can actually get them I found them a lot over at the auto parts stores they have used ones for about $14 or so and hey they work always suggest though since if it's going to be for a woman get at least two sizes bigger than what you are because a lot of them are made for men with no back sides and a lot of us women have definitely a bodacious booty so keep that in mind. So uh, now we're going to be going under it and I'm going to have to turn it off, turn the camera off and go under it then because I'm going to end up dropping it and only thing you'd see was gravel. Hello right, everyone. So, so this is underneath the car. Sadly, let me see. Yeah, it's all the way out. So it's kind of hard to see things. Um, so when you are underneath it, might it's probably not going to look exactly. Let me see if I can not exactly the same as what this one looks like but one thing you'll always have to make sure of is that you are looking and going to take out the drain plug for the oil pan 
Um, I have never done this, but when I've gone under there on different cars, the oil pan can look close to the same as the transmission pan. But the transmission, just a minute, Luna! Luna just got in trouble by mom, grandma. So, back to this. Um, so, this is my oil pan for the 06 Nissan. Um, it's kind of small. has a, a drain right here. Um, and then, this is the transmission, which we haven't had to change it yet. It's definitely getting close to needing to. This one actually has somewhere you can drain, which is very rare. Um, most of them you have to take all these off and then you just pretty much have to put something there so you don't get completely covered in transmission fluid. So, we are getting to this. Next we'll be trying to find and make sure that we can find the right, uh, socket for this one. I don't believe it's metric, but it could be, I can't remember. So we're going to try a couple of standard. And then if it's not, it's metric. Um, for people who do not understand what I'm talking about, uh, metric is usually on uh, foreign cars. Nissan is um, originally from, I believe, Japan or China. Um, but I have found even a lot of American brands have metric. It's a little different sizing than uh, American standard version. So we will see. I will get back to you. All right, so I am back now. So we found out that it is a 916th standard. Um, I'll show you what 916th looks like. This is the 916th standard. So now we will be getting, um, starting to take off the um, drainage plug right here. Oops, drainage plug right here. But before we do that, make sure that everything is out of the way and that our little oil catcher is going to be close to where it needs to be because I do not want to get covered in oil again. That has actually happened and the worst part is that it went all the way through my clothes and it took a couple of scrubs for I end up needing help to get all the oil off because it went onto my underclothing and the underclothing then soaked it all the way around myself. So definitely make sure that's in the right spot all right so i'm hoping i'm gonna try to put this in a way if you can't i apologize because that looks like it should. Probably not. I'm trying. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Make sure that it's doing righty tighty, lefty loosey. So right now it says the L for lefty loosey. So, Sally, this might actually. And that is not. <sighs> there we go. Um, it depends really on your car. If you have never done it yourself, it actually might be too tight for you to do it one-handed. Um, I have just had um, practice on this. And this has been my couple times of changing this oil of this car so it's tight enough that it won't leak but not so tight that I can't unscrew it so another reason why you will see me wearing gloves at this point is because of that sometimes you are lucky enough that you do not have to deal with that You'll be able to just pull and be out of the way. 
I'm not that coordinated at my, there we go, um, at the end of the day. And this is the end of the day for me. It's about three or four o'clock and I've already been dealing with a headache all day. So next thing, as I always mention, is to make sure that's in the right direction. I'm in the right spot to catch all of it. You'll have to be under here to make sure that it is moving with the stream. Because that's what was my problem is I wasn't paying attention, just laying here um, with my dog and found out boom so that's draining we'll be getting back to it hey everyone so we are back we've been having that uh having the oil drip and uh i got to have a little bit of quick lunch and another tip i'll give you um when you are getting ready to change your oil have a extra pair of gloves in your um pants pocket so that you don't have to um get up and get more you can just take these off and change them. And again, another reason why I say do not be surprised if you have to uh, take a shower after this. That's what usually happens for me. Uh, it's almost impossible for me ever to work on a car and not get dirty. So if you are a person who does not like getting dirty, well then uh, you're the type of person that will either need to get over it if you don't have the money to get change your oil by somebody or bite the dust and um, change it yourself and I mean pay someone to do it so next thing that's a little difficult for me that I a lot of times have problems with doing is finding aha, finding the nut again now I do mistakes like drop it into um, into the oil but sometimes I do it on purpose to clean off the gravel so now I do that and I will put it back in now next we're going to be having to change the filter I have all the oil drain first so that I don't have to um, worry about excess oil and the filter dropping on me there still might be a little oil coming out, but you won't have to worry about it that much. Uh, another good thing is if you have someone that um, can assist you, you can have that person get um, paper towels for you. Like my mom right now is sitting out there, and I'm going to ask her to get me some paper towels. Hey, Mom. Can you get some paper towels for me? There are some paper towels either in the back, uh, back seat of the Nissan. Back seat of the Nissan, please. Uh, passenger side, I believe, but it could be driver's side. So, I'm going to wait until I get the uh, paper towels to wipe off all the excess oil right here. Best thing to do is always wipe everything off so that if there is any leaks... Um, can you just hand me a paper, um, one at a time? I can't really, um, grab them. So I got some right now, Ma. Thank you, though. Okay. But best thing is always to wipe off any oil that's around the plug so that if there is any leaking. <sighs> Thank you. Any leaking. Thank you, Mama. Um, you will be able to tell by having no oil there already. So, we now will take my wrench. Ooh, I'll have my coffee in a little bit. I'm going to try to, if you see a paper towel, I am sorry, but I'm not wanting to really touch my cell phone with um, my greasy gloves. So, again, tighten it enough to be tight, but still enough that you can loosen it yourself. 
So now we will push this to the side. Make sure there's not a whole bunch of oil in our way. Make sure the ground is covered and we will now search for the oil filter. Takes me sometimes a while because I have to remember where it is. Let me see if I can point it out to you. See that one thing right there? Right here, my finger's touching it. That is the oil filter. Um, this one's extra dirty. I think it's because it's been raining and muddy. Um, I do see one thing when you're under here, you always look for things that are wet, moist, anything of that sort. So I might be popping the hood to, I will have to be popping the hood anyway, but I'll be seeing why that right there looks shiny as in wet. That's another thing that you will always do when you're down here is to make sure that you can see things. Now, since, as I said, some oil might come down, I'm going to reposition myself so I still can reach the oil filter, but oil can drip down. And so again, some people do this with a oil filter wrench. I don't usually own one. My husband has one in back of his car, I believe, but it's not for this smaller one, so I usually use it with my hand. I might end up having to take my glove off to do this, um, so I'm gonna have to put you down because I can't do it one hand. So I will let you know how that went. But you'll be turning it righty-tighty, lefty-loosey again. Um, I will let you know which way I t have to turn it because sometimes the righty tidy lefty loosey trick is a little different. So, so I will talk to you in a bit. I got the loosening turn. I turned it left for lefty loosey. Um, sometimes I have caught different cars. Sometimes the cars are lefty loosey for um, if you would be facing the back side of the car. So it's the opposite direction, which I hate and I don't understand, but I was able to get it. I just had to reposition myself a little bit. So we're going to start turning. Sadly, my, there we go. Now, as you can tell, it's starting to let a little oil out. Now, again, as I said, it's going to, so be prepared. Sometimes it doesn't matter if you drain all the oil, there will be still oil in the filter. Some people, what they have done, they do a little trick instead of um, starting to let these drain by just opening them like this. Some people I have known, um, a truck driver I know does this when he changes the oil is he'll use a Phillips head screwdriver and a hammer and po poke a hole in it and let it drain that way. Since this is in such a tight area, I don't suggest it. So. I have gotten this off. Oops. This is the filter. And I'm going to ask my assistant again, my mom. That's my mom. Say hi, mom. You're going to be on YouTube. Oh, hi. <laughs> Uh, can you reach the filter that's the clean filter right, right here. here? Yeah. Actually, 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 give me, I just changed my mind. Hand me that one. The, not that one. No, no, uh, the, that you just put your hand on. That you just moved. That. Thank you. Sadly, sometimes, as you can tell, my brain will not think of the name. But it is much easier to put that in a separate container to start draining. If you want to untake that out of the box for me. I'm glad I'm here. Thank you. So, this is the new new filter. It's a Fram filter. Has a little, uh, thank you, Mom. You're welcome. Gasket right here. Now, big thing to tell you. 
if you do not put oil on this gasket. I have had a friend who did not because it was his first time changing oil. What ends up happening is this gasket will melt because of the heat and then it will seal it permanently in there with you having to pry and pry and be and a couple times you might curse because you're so mad at yourself. So this is a dirty part that you have to get your fingers dirty. Not all those fingers, but I couldn't remember how bit, how much the oil was. So you then put oil on the ring. I'm going to put you down for a minute as I will then wipe my fingers off. But as you can tell, I had to take my gloves off because I couldn't remember which way it was. And it was a little tighter than what I usually do. So um, I will be washing my hands. This goes on here. Sometimes, depending on your car, this will not be easy to find. I had a 90, 94 Ford Taurus uh, station wagon. Okay, that is as tight as I can get it. it yep tight as I can get it so again we take the rag take that all down make sure it's clean as possible and next we will be putting oil in the car best thing is to put at least enough oil um, so that it's safe to take the car down without starting it. Um, I mean with starting it because you don't want to have to start it, take it down the ramps on no oil. Yes, there may be some oil in there, but I never want to take a chance because running out of oil in a car, you can do a lot of things to it that costs a lot of money or you just have to say goodbye to that car. So another thing, while you're underneath your car, you can look around, see how things are. Yes, I am not saying I am a mechanic. I'm a little backyard mechanic. Um, so if in certain air, certain cars you can see a lot, like this car you can. Um, so just check things, make sure that if they look like they might be busted, go to an actual mechanic and say, hey, this looks like it's getting worn, like for here. If these were coming apart, that's when I'd be going, okay, it's time for me to get some new, um, I want to call them end bearings, but I know it's not it. I will be letting you know what those are called again, because I had to change them in my 84 Mercedes. And just check down here with the exhaust, make sure there's nothing, no holes or anything. Um, in some states, you have to do emissions testing. Um, and I don't know, our state and Washington state, you don't have to do that, so I don't really know what they all look for, but I do know holes in your exhaust are not good. Um, then you can also just see if anything is, uh, looking like it might need to be replaced. Here, we don't, I don't see anything that does. Um, I will be showing you as I'm scooting down here. I will be showing you the alternator because I can see it down here if I ever have, ever have to change the. Mom, she's right there. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, if I ever have to change the alternator, it looks like I might have to come down here for a couple of the bolts. But, um,. I will touch it. This is the alternator for my 906 uh, Nissan. Um, it looks like there would be less. Uh, no, it looks like the main very long bolt will be down here too. But hey, at least I have more room. My 84, Nis uh, 84 Mercedes 
much less room, huge hassle, and your arms feel like they're going to fall off by the time you get done. So, if I ever do have to uh, change the uh, alternator, I'll definitely videotape that for you guys. I hope I don't have to, but I might. And then always keep in mind where your oil jug is, because you don't want to tip that over, because then there'll be a lot of washing for you. So, then you just kind of look to see how things are. Just a minute. Luna! Come here! Grandma's getting nervous! My little floppy-eared Yoda. You don't need to mess with that. Get back over here. Hi. There's my little Yoda. My little Luna Yoda. So, I'm going to start backtracking, and I will be then getting up on top. And we we'll are back. Oil. So now we are popping open the hood. Um, with each car, it is different for popping up the hood. There's a lever in the, um, in the driver's side bottom dash area. And then, if you can tell, there's a little... I don't know if we'll pick it up. There's a little square here of missing piece. You pull the lever, and then just pull it up. I'm going to hand the camera over to my mom. This one, it has a stick to hold up the car. And that goes right in where the arrow says. Alright, so right now the car is still warm, so I will not be checking the uh, radiator, because what ends up happening when you, change, when you check the radiator when it's hot is that's under pressure. So you can actually get a lot of hot radiator fluid spewing onto you, which is very dangerous and very painful. So, we check out to make sure everything's all right. One thing I noticed that's missing that, oh. um, oh. I don't have to usually check things that much. I don't know where this came from. That hasn't been there since the last time I checked the car. But it looks like maybe the last person to check things with this car, which was not out, me, forgot to put the uh, coolant cap on. This is the, um, kind of like the extra place for if this goes low, you have extra water right here to make sure that um, you don't actually break something more in your car. Here is also where the uh, washer fluid is to check and stuff. It might, it will be needing some, but I'm not gonna change, put more in right at this moment. Then this is the power of steering fluid right now. See, it does look like it might need some. Um, it's not, it's getting low on it. Um, right now, we found out that some mice were having some fun living in my mom's <laughs> trunk of her car. And we found out they decided, let me try the power steering fluid jug and let me try the oil jug. So guess what? We don't have any extra oil that I usually have in the back of my mom's car for safety reasons. And we do not have any extra power steering fluid <laughs> because they decided to take one nibble, which made it all leak. So it does look like I will have to buy some more power steering fluid, which I'll be doing that tomorrow because I don't have any with me at this moment. <laughs> Next thing is to always check the battery terminals. Um, don't touch them because you don't, it's like there are dangerous things. I have never gotten zapped by a, like for by this, but really just don't accidentally find out that you can. Just make sure there's no corrosion. If there is, um, you can clean it off. There's none on here, so I'm not going to show you how to. Next is the air filter. Um, it hasn't been changed on this one since when? I don't remember when. But a couple metal rings. This one, it's getting dirty, as you can tell. I have an extra one that I haven't used yet, so I'm going to be using that. 
this is the uh, brake fluid. Um, if you ever do have to put any in there, as the top of the cap says, clean this out because you do not want any dirt or any farm material in your um, brake fru fluid. That's just a big mess that I'm not even going to talk about. So um, that looks fine for right now. Um, I do have to go into my trunk and get the funnel to add the oil and then also get this. And Luna still hasn't gotten out of the car. <laughs> Our Luna, you open a door. Which, since actually all the windows are open. Oh, now she goes, okay. Found out we're not going anywhere. But if you open a car door, she automatically thinks we're going to go somewhere. So. Next is to get the funnel. I have moved all the um, necessities of the car to the bottom area. Let me see if I do actually. Is this power steering fluid? This is automatic transmission fluid, so no. There is my funnel. And the air filter. I knew it was one more thing I needed. Oh. I'm sorry, Mom. It's okay. I didn't know you were holding on to it for me. So, let's do the air filter first because we're right here. Always make sure that's the right air filter. When you go to like Walmart and stuff, they always have this little computerized thing that will tell you what um, the number is for your specific car for the 06 Nissan, the MGA46116. Um, or when you go like to O'Reilly's and stuff, they will actually get that for you. You don't have to go and, oh, I don't know what it is. You can go up going, excuse me, I need to find the oil filter for my 06 Nissan. Can you please find that for me? They'll even do it for guys, but if you are a cute little girl, they will do it quite easily for you. And that definitely looks like I might need to vacuum that out sometime because it is getting dirty. But I don't have the time to do it right now. So we just set that in right there. Make sure it's in all the way. Surprisingly, the mice didn't decide to chew that up. They did chew on the box a little bit, but they didn't decide they decided they weren't interested in that. They might have died before they got to that point. I sure hope so. I hate the mice. I at uh reiterate that. I like pet mice. I love pet rats. But when it comes to pest mice I cheer when I hear that mouse trap go off oh gross and then I go hey honey yeah. that's one great thing about getting married you go you go do the icky job so there's that so then again there's always times where you can just look to see if there's anything that's doesn't look right but everything looks right for right now um next thing before you put new oil in, wipe down, wipe up, and try to clean off as much as you possibly can your funnel. You don't want any of the icky dirt. I always have to check out what my dog's doing. I'm a dog mom. I'm going to be going, okay, what is she doing now? What is she getting into? Most times she doesn't get into things, but it's a dog mom thing. Alright, so there's where the oil is. Um, it's much easier with one that's a little fatter bottom, so you can just do that, but you don't get the choice with a lot of them. Um, next thing I will be showing you also is the transmission dipstick. Um, but let's um, start with getting the oil in. Um, now, there will be guys that will be perfect and not spill any oil. Good for you! That ain't gonna happen to you. We're gonna end up spilling oil. I will try very hard not to. But, you have to be very talented and remember how to and actually have the strength to be able to pour it with this height. It is very hard for me to pour it from this height. So, with this, again, always check to see what kind your car takes on oil. Um, a lot of cars will have actually what kind it takes on the cap. This one 
does not. Um, I don't know why, but it doesn't. Um, you can go on, mm, excuse me, um, online, or you can even look in the owner's manual. Sometimes it will tell you exactly what kind it takes. Me, I have to find out the best way to have that held. No. I'm going to that. So, oh, look at that. We didn't have oil spill yet. Ah, there we go. Spillage. Spillage. You'll get that a lot. You slowly just let it feed in there. Sometimes you might have to stop and let it go down itself. So this is a lengthy time cooling uh, time done process, but it's okay because sometimes working in the cars, there's more spillage. <laughs> it's going to take patience, like uh, working on the brakes. That is a process, depending on your car, that is a very big process, working on the um, on glitchy my husband's car that is a very patient process what, end up, <coughs> what kind of car uh glitchy is the oh, is chevy it's a chevy lumina 97 1997 chevy lumina that is a process just because um things are cornered on there so you take muscle now it sounds like our landlord ron holcomb is just coming home but uh pretty much we're almost done we're just slowly feeding this in um we will get back to you when this is all in and we're checking the transmission fluid so it's yeah. fun coming back to uh, adding up the oil. Mm -hmm. And now we have Tabby Cat, who loves our dog, and our dog loves Tabby Cat. And Tabby Cat loves to check each other, check, um, come and see what we're all doing. He might have something in his toe. So I'm oh. going to have you hold that so I can check his toe. Hey, Tabby Cat. I want to check the toe. Who was taking a toe? Why were you taking a toe? Hopefully you're sick and you told. Mwah. There you go. Okay. Tabby Cat doesn't love love, but I don't care. I love giving kitty love. So, next is the chain check the oil. We just put um, about three quarters of a gallon in there. So, next is the check it. This is the oil dipstick. There might, it might be in a different spot for your car. This is just for mine. The hard part about this one is it looks like um, people in the past had let it kind of burn. So there's little burn marks on it of old oil. So what I do is just wipe it off first. Now, there might be some people who actually know what they're looking at when they look at a dipstick. But I do know some who do not know. Not saying nothing's wrong with it. It just means you have to learn. So... When you're looking at a dipstick, I don't know if the camera will be picking mm -hmm. this up. Some dipsticks will have a low and a high in this little area. If your oil is past the little fish netting, you need to add some. If it you don't, one thing you don't want to do though is overfill. It's just the car doesn't like it. So try to get it at least right here. So I'm going to check it again. Dip it in. All right, so it looks like it's right at the high mark, so I leave it alone. I do not add any more. Put it back in. And tomorrow you might want to check it before you drive it as yes. it settles <clears throat> through this the night. As my mom said, check it in the morning if you're going anywhere to make sure that it, it might have settled, might not have. So next I am going to be checking the transmission fluid because that's the only fluid I actually have left since the stupid mice. So, other cars is different, like the Sadie's transmission dipstick is back here. 
with this one it's right here a lot of them have a locking mechanism the Sadie's has a little red cap that pops it open this one has I don't know if it's catching on there has just a little metal spring loaded thing that you pull pinch and pull this is much shorter than some of them all right so this yes is low this is where it, at hot is where it's supposed to be right here it's all the way down here actually sorry my mistaking actually I'm going to do what I did with the oil and dip it in again it's kind of hard to see I haven't checked this one myself because I forgot always about it because I'm so used to all right so actually here's where it's supposed to be on hot right here it's still hot so it is fine on cold it's supposed to be right up here since it's not cold all right for right now another thing when you are checking your transmission fluid look at the color this is the color it's supposed to be a uh, pink I always call it a popsicle red um, but if it's brown or anything of that not this color that's when it is time to start changing it or if it smells like with this one it doesn't smell really of anything it smells of course like a chemical like you're not supposed to eat it but it doesn't smell like Burnt Please anything. don't eat it. <laughs> yeah, don't eat anything that if it goes in your car, don't put it in your mouth. <laughs> that says also do not be putting any Tide Pods in your mouth because that's just plain on stupid. And I will call anyone who does that stupid because that is stupid. If anyone wants to chew me out, well then fine. I would love to know how it is smart to do that. Rant over. So we have checked the transmission fluid, the oil level the coolant put the cap back on so I don't know what happened with that power steering we'll be putting more power steering in tomorrow when I actually have that we checked the air filter which now is just bugging me because of how dusty it is um, I did check to see where the oil was cut where the liquid is coming from down there I really cannot see where any liquid is coming down onto that little tube so Later, if I remember, I might have my husband check it, but we really haven't had any problems with this car yet. Um, we've checked the uh, brake fluid by just looking into here and clean it off a little bit. And it's at its level of okayness. Um, if we really wanted to, we could check everything else out, but right now we're doing okay. Um, if you always want to, you can always do a little dusting. Please don't do that. <laughs> it's in the hook. It's not going to go anywhere. Um, <laughs> dusting if you like. Every once in a while I will. Um, again, when you are done with working on it, clean, clean up, up your mess. <laughs> clean up your mess, please. <laughs> if you're adult enough to change your own oil, you need to be adult enough to pick up your own mess. <laughs> <laughs>